can satisfy it all. Yeah. 
How many of you are not going to stop till you see it? Hearts on fire with burning desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Till I see miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm not going to stop till I see it. Healings, raising of the dead, restoring of sight to the blind. I'm not going to stop till we see it. Deliverance from addiction. I'm not going to stop till we see it. We see it. We won't stop. Amen, amen. 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 If you're tuning in to us, this is Dove Church. And we thank God for hearts on fire for him. We thank you for your viewership. We thank you for your donations. We thank you for partnering with us to get this good news out. And we love you today and I'm praying for you. Good information will come at the end of this presentation. God bless you as we move into the word. If you're ready for the word and you have your Bibles handy, lift them up. Whatever device they're on. Repeating after me our confession. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert 
My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you. Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be in this word time. Bless us as we preach from this sacred desk. Bless us as we teach from this sacred desk. Give our folk ears to hear, hearts to receive, and feet of commitment. And God, we thank you for everything that's freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. Enliven us. Bring us alive. Present us alive in powerful ways. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. We're going to talk from the subject today. You have enough to believe. You have enough to believe. You have enough to believe. We're going to give our scripture and then we'll go into explaining it and talking about it and pulling out some life application points. John 20, 30 and 31. Everything is New King James today, except for one passage from Galatians, which is coming down in the message. Here begins the reading. John 20, 30 and 31. And truly... Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, And that believing, you may have life in his name. And I need to read that last phrase again. And that believing, you may have life in his name. This short text gives us the summary statement of the Gospel of John. It is the ending, and, 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 and it gives us th this, th this summary statement. While there is another chapter, this gives us the summary statement of John's Gospel. It sums it all up in a few words, what this thing was about. And it opens by saying, Jesus did many other signs. Many other signs. John admits that he has presented an incomplete collection of the sayings of Jesus. How do we know that? Because he said, and Jesus did many other signs. He couldn't possibly record every saying and writing and, and uh, all that Jesus said and did. The reason why I know that in the next chapter over, John 21, 25, it says this. And it further complained, further uh, explains the incompleteness that John is referencing when he said Jesus did many other signs. The incompleteness is further explained here. Uh, 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 
it says, there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Then he said, amen, it's the truth. He did so much till the world can't even contain it. And we're talking about not 33 years of life, but in three years of ministry. He did so much till the books would overrun every library and every street and everything, trying to contain everything. That means all day, every day, Jesus was teaching, doing something, raising somebody, blessing somebody, miracle signs and wonder. That's why he expects them to follow you because that was his whole life. And we look at it as incidental, but for them, it was everyday occurrences. Before breakfast, we saw a miracle. In visiting the Civil Rights Museum in Atlanta a few, I think it's a few months ago, there was a room of closely guarded writings, recordings, and notes of Dr. Martin Luther King. Some of the things had not been discovered until after he died. And his widow turned them over to this, these precious things over to this museum, the bulk of them. Many of them had not been categorized. They were all, some of them were, 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 were bits of paper. We get some finished products like, like his, his jail letters and his, his I have a dream speech. But before he actually delivered the speech, before he actually delivered the speech, he had done bits and pieces of it everywhere. And, and all of those pieces... And we, we could walk into the room, we could see some of the fragments laid out behind cases and, and, and on shelves, and it was volumes. And once they're categorized and put together and organized, they will be known as the complete works of Martin Luther King. Not so with Jesus. You can't contain all of his works, the fragments, the things that he did. You, you can't, you'll never get to the end and say, this is the completed work of Jesus Christ. Are you out there? John trusts that a personal relationship with Jesus will reveal more to the believer. He is basically saying, what I have given you is more than enough to believe on Jesus. You got enough. It's incomplete. You don't know everything he said, but you have enough to believe. That's important. That's important to know that you got just what you need. This time in history, the history that we're living and experiencing, is particularly identified with many unsatisfied appetites of not having enough and always wanting more. It's as if more means I don't have enough. And when we get the more, it is not enough. Whoa. I got to have more. And when you get the more... I see more that I need. I see more that I have to have. Let's, let's go into the Old Testament and, and talk about some people who had what they needed, but, but they were never satisfied, the Israelites. Moses' leadership was not enough, so in his absence, they created a calf idol God. When they were hungry, 
manna from heaven was not enough. They still wanted the leeks and the onions and the garlic down in Egypt. That was not enough. When, when they wanted meat, God caused quail to, to, to fly low enough, change the habitat of those birds so that they would fly low enough till they didn't have to reach. All they had to do was reach their arm out and snatch them out of the air. And they ate so much till the Bible said they had meat between their teeth. Maybe they didn't have two pits. But they were still not satisfied. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not talking about anybody in here. Just that their attitude of never having enough was not only distrust, but it's a lack of faith in God who, who, who had already established his testimony with them. When they crossed over the Red Sea, anything after that should have made them believe that God was going to keep working with them. He bankrupt a whole country. Shut it down. Till on the last day, the children of Israel went shopping through Egypt. The calf they made to replace Moses was from the Egyptians that they just went through their houses and picked up all their gold and their diamonds and their silver and all their precious metal. But that still was not enough. Continuing with this text, it says, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Though there be many signs, John selected the signs presented in his gospel to explain Jesus and to bring readers faith. This is enough for you to believe on him. I'm going to give you just a, 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 a short list of them. But and it goes on. I want to say that there is no text in the whole Bible which was, in, which was created to cause doubt. So everything in this book is designed to get you to believe on one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you get in trouble, this is designed to drive you to Jesus. When, you, when you're wondering whether you have a victory, you read in here, we are more than conquerors. Through, through, to get you to Jesus. It's all about getting you to Jesus. Does that make sense? From beginning to end. What is doubt? Well, Charles Spurgeon Centuries ago said, doubt is a seed of self-sown or sown by the devil. And it usually springs up with more than sufficient abundance without our care. In other words, every time an opportunity to believe presents itself, doubt without help will show up. It's the enemy's plan to stop what God has for you. How many times has the Lord spoken to us in our heart, but right after that, you say, I don't know. How many times has that happened, and you didn't trust what the Holy Spirit, did, that, because it didn't come like a, a bang, it wasn't a clap, it wasn't thunder, it wasn't a bell ringing. It was just a still, small voice that was urging you, don't do this. Oh. Because we operate with the wrong senses. Come on, thank you, Holy Ghost. What are you talking about, preacher, when we operate with the wrong senses? 
We operate with emotions rather than with inspiration. Emotions operate from the outside in and inspiration happens from the inside out. See, when you get emotional, you misstep and you make the wrong decision and you come to the wrong conclusion. You think if you're already insecure and you see somebody whispering, every time you see somebody whispering, you think they're talking about you. They may be, but not always. That's emotion. But inspiration starts from the inside. It inspires you to move past your emotion. And it might not feel like anything, but it inspires you to do something different. It inspires you to touch it. It inspires you to work with it. And that's of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Be inspired, not cold and indifferent. See, some people that are... I, I, I led of the Holy Ghost, they look mean as a junkyard dog all the time. I don't want a mean religion. I want to be inspired and happy. Are you out there? So quell your emotions and operate in inspiration. Wow. Throughout John's gospel, he has listed Signs. Here is a rundown of some of the signs that were performed. They're key ones. So that you would not only have to a need met immediately, but you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus meets in immediate needs with signs, and it becomes a testimony of his goodness. Wow. So you get delivered. The greater end is that you are testimony to believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you get over something, when you are able to be re-employed after losing a job, it becomes a testimony after your job need is met to the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's all designed to make you believe. So do you believe? After you get through, are you still believing? It's hard on one side of it. But believe your way through. Oh, my God. Here here comes a rundown. Just just jot these scriptures down, but I'm going to read the first one. John 2 and 11 says, and this, this is all about John today. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, his first sign and wonder. And it was prompted by his mama because she knew who he was. Even though he got a little huffy and said, woman, I can't imagine saying woman to my mom. (laughs) Woman, where is dinner? (laughs) I would have gotten dinner, but it would have been in a different form. And you know, anybody ever just call your mom a woman? Woman, where are my school clothes? (laughs) And when I came to, it was the next day. (laughs) But she understanding in this wedding of Cana, see, say, uh, do what he said. And so he turned water into wine. And and then the Bible goes on to say, after it identified, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested. That means it appeared. His glory showed. And his disciples did what? Believe. When they saw that miracle, they believed. When you get delivered, does it make you believe on Jesus Christ? It's all designed to make you believe. That's why we're called believers, because we don't just believe everything. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Are you a believer today? I'm a believer. What do you believe in? I believe on Jesus Christ. My God. Let me give you some more. John 4, 46 through 54. Healing of the nobleman's son. John 5, 1 through 15. Healing of a man with infirmities who could not walk at the pool of Bethesda and, and had nobody to get him in. And Jesus said, when Jesus showed him, she said, you, you don't know what, you, you got what you need here on the bank or around the pool. You don't need to get in because what you need is standing with you right now. You don't know that I made the pool. John 6, 1 through 15, feeding of the 5,000. It wasn't just to meet their need. It met their immediate need, but it was to make them believe on Jesus Christ. Wow, wow. John 9, 1 through 12, healing of the man born blind. Then John 11, 1 to 44, raising up his best friend, Lazarus. And then the greatest sign of all was after after they thought they had murdered him at Calvary, three days later, he got up from the grave. And he did it all so that you would get the immediate need of salvation met, completed, but that you would know that and believe on Jesus Christ. Do you believe? Look at somebody and say, do you believe today? And turn back to him and ask him, what else does he need to do for you to believe? Then it goes on to say the son of God. The title does not, of course, imply biological birth, but the metaphor of sonship expresses the unity, nature, close fellowship, and unique intimacy between Jesus and the father. And when you get become a believer, you are, you are entwined in that intimate fellowship. You are no longer bastards, but you are sons and daughters. Not biological, but by belief. And, and then the next verse says, and that believing you may have life in his name. John knew that, I want to say it right, understood that faith in Jesus had value beyond the honorable recognition of the truth. Okay, let me say it this way. It also carried the promise of life in his name. This was life that transformed John himself and he wanted the same life and transformation for all through his gospel account. That's why he didn't attempt to try to put all of Jesus' writing in one place. He said, I just picked out enough of the stuff that helped me believe so I could pass it to you that you would believe. Isn't that good? So you would move into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this belief isn't complicated. It's as simple as ABC. Accept, believe, and commit. Now the accept and believe, eh, we can work with. But committing is a problem. Committing over the long haul is a problem. When you commit, you, you sign on to it and you stay with it until God changes the assignment. You commit it. When people go to the altar, they commit for a lifetime. Divorce is never intended to be the next step. Talking about commitment. It's not always easy, but it's not complicated. A, B, C. Except.
Then this passage says, life in his name. Through his name does not mean through the naming of the name. Because some people recognize the name Jesus, but they don't know the power that it carries. When they're about to be in an accident, Jesus. But do you serve him and do you know him? I, 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 I serve him in my own way. Just say no. Just say it. No. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm. We beat it around the bush. Just, just, just be who you are. Just say no. I, 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 I only call him when I need him. Pre-surgery. Pre-broke. I got to run on because I see this thing. In the Bible, the name of God is not merely the name by which he is designated, but all that he is, is in his name. Everything is in his name. One songwriter said, everything I need, I find in God. I find in Jesus. For the believer is not familiarity with the name Jesus that does it. It's recognizing that you are in possession of his name. That makes the difference. What you hold makes the difference. So I call it often all through the day. Because I'm in possession of his name. I use it when I don't need it. I use it when nothing's happening. When I sit down to eat, thank you, Jesus. When I get up in the morning, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm in possession of the name, so I use it. How many of you are in possession of an ATM card? I'm not going to ask you how often do you use it. How many of you are used to carrying just about no cash? Why? One day I wanted to do something with some money and I realized I didn't have any money on me in my pocket. And I couldn't remember when I had some money in my pocket. Oh, I'm talking to folk. You're you walking around with a watch. You just break it out in a money clip. No. You go to the ATM machine. And if I dare say, you go more often than you need to go. I'm only getting $20. That's Monday. Wednesday, you get another 20. Thursday, another 20. Just go at the beginning of the week. We use ATM cards. Well, if you thought about using Jesus' name as much as you want to use that card. You develop a habit of understanding what you're in possession of. See, my card means access to resources. And having his name means you have access to what? How many of you are glad today that you have access to resource? Because everything I need is in him. I got access today. And even when doubt wants to tell me I don't, I know that I know that I know because John has made such a good case that I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I got access. So when I'm down, I'm, I still have access. When I'm going through, I still have access. When act up is all over the place, I still. Put your hands together. You got access. You got a benefit. You, 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 you got a benefit. And you can lean on somebody other than who's in your mirror every day. 
Because if you trust in what's in your mirror, one day your mirror can crack. And you better make sure your hope is in an image that's uncrackable. I start to bring a mirror and a big hammer and put it inside a bag and, and have you look at the mirror. And then I was going to take it and sit it up here and take the hammer and knock the you-know-what out of it. You need to look to him and not look to you. Because you are not enough to get yourself out of trouble. How many have come to that realization? The personal possession of the name Jesus brings life. And John got crazy there. Start talking about what kind of life you have. Not only did he do it in this gospel, but he did it in 1 John, 2 John. Over in Revelation. It, they're all of it. I said, that's just his thing, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Life in Christ. I, I'm living because of Jesus. But, but the old songwriter used to say, I'm living this life just to live again. Because I have life in Jesus Christ. Let, let's do a rundown. Just write them down. I, I, John 1 and 4 says, in him was life. And, and the life was the light of men. See, when you have Christ's life, you have Christ's light. You want to know which way to go? Christ's light. John 6, I am the bread of life. That means your hunger needs are satisfied. Because you have the bread of all life. 1 John 5 and 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us. Come on, somebody. Eternal life. Yes. And this life is in his son. I'm not dying to get it. When I got saved, I got eternal life through, through Jesus Christ. I'm living in him. Is he alive? I'm alive. Was he raised from the dead? We're going to be raised too. Are we going to live with him forever? I'm living this life just to live again. Galatians 2, 20 through 21, and it's in the message, and I'm just reading from the portion that I need to read it from. And it said there, From the Message Bible, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I am no longer driven to impress God. Who stop there. When you realize that God is unimpressed. You can't impress him. Stop trying. God, you see me. You see me. See how good I'm doing today. When we get sideways, we don't say, God, you see me. We, ooh, I hope he turned his head. Christ lives in me. This, the life you see me, am no longer driven. Am no, the life you see me living is not mine. But it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not going to go back on that. It is not clear to you that to go back to that old rule-keeping, peer-pleasing religion would be an abandonment of everything personal and free in my relationship with God. I refuse to do that. To repudiate God's grace, if a living relationship with God 
could come by rule keeping, then Christ died unnecessarily. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do any of that. Not even about your opinion. Everybody got one. But I'm, div I'm living this life because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't have to worry about being accepted by God. Because the word says, there is no way to the Father. but by Jesus. So I believe on Jesus. You must believe to life. Your goal is to believe to life. And believe to live. We ought to put that on a t-shirt. Believe to life and believe to live. Watchman Nee, the Chinese theologian, stated that in his his, his, his book on uh, spiritual man. Jesus is the sum total of all spiritual things. And then he went on and got crazy with it. He said, Jesus is God's everything. Everything God is, he put in Jesus. That Jesus could come after us that we could be in relationship with them. What do you need? What are you looking for? What's wrong? What life do you want to have? Which way do you want to live? Do you believe what's been given about Jesus? Do you believe it? Do you believe what John said? And when John was talking about this book, that book, he wasn't talking about Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He wasn't talking about Acts. He wasn't talking about Genesis, Exodus. He wasn't talking about Samuel, Leviticus, Psalm. He was talking about what he wrote about Jesus in his book. He said, based on what I wrote about him, it's enough for me to believe that Jesus is God's son. I got enough to believe. I got enough to believe. I don't have to write everything he said. He said Mary had a little laugh. No, no, I don't need to write that. I gave you enough of my eyewitness account so you would know that Jesus is who he said he is. He is God's son. I have enough to believe. You have enough to believe. So my question to you today, what's the problem? Do you believe today? Why are you relying on stuff that don't matter about what you believe? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and it'll be well with you. Do you believe today? Don't believe on nobody that's still in the grave. Run to a place where the tomb is empty. And the grave crows were left behind. Do you believe today? What do you want? What you're looking for? What is it you're after? What are you waiting for? You have enough to believe. My God, my God, my God. You have enough. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we praise you. And we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the possession of the name Jesus. We thank you that it's more than enough. 
I don't need every piece of paper that was said about Jesus. I just need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so I can live. And I thank you today. I do believe and I do have life. And after all of this is gone, your word is told me. I have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every hand up, worshiping God, you have enough to believe. Thank him for the possession today. Thank him for the possession of the name today. Some of the stuff you think you need, you don't need. You just need the name. As we get ready to go to this table. You ought to thank him for what he's done for you. Thus far. And it's enough. He's been your everything. Anybody in the room, you can put your hands down. Know that, that, that in these last two weeks, he just carried you through some periods of some stuff helped you through. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. God said, tell them. Stop calling it the end before you get to the end. Let God take you through. Let him take you through. Because I declare you don't need nothing else. You got enough to believe. You got enough to believe. Praise you, Lord. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just quickly, let's get prepared for communion. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.